Welcome back. Uh, the MCG was rocking 91,000 plus, and Geelong did what few teams have been able to do this year. They've beaten Collingwood in a close game. It was an unbelievable. That man, Jeremy Cameron, you talk about individual performances in finals. It was superb. Chris Scott planted this seed very early on in the, in the uh, season. And they are through to a prelim. They're in the box seat right now. It was, a, it was a joy to be there and to watch it. And they did it the hard way because Collingwood, to all intents and purposes, jumped them in the first quarter. Well, when I say jumped them, they had it on their terms. Yeah, well, it, play, it played out in a similar fashion to the way a lot of Geelong's finals have, have started, where Geelong just couldn't find a way to hit the scoreboard. So you're sitting there sort of halfway through the first quarter and you think, geez, I, I, thought, I thought the Cats were... We're going to be different than mm. this in the first. It, it didn't. That was it more didn't about look, Collingwood than. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I think so. I think so. Uh, well, certainly in retrospect, but at the time, mm. you know, it was it was what what's what's going on with Geelong? I thought this was going to be a little bit different, and they weren't. They were going to come out and and um, you know be be a bit more potent with the ball in hand. But the, the pressure the pressure just I think overwhelmed them to begin with. Jase, there's a couple of examples. Um, it's great to have Jase. I've got to say this: a very late call up. So. Uh, <laughs> He's, he's doing the, the rundown on the run, but he's an odd consummate professional. A couple of, this, this stat bobbed up a couple of times over the weekend. We'll talk about it in Sydney and Melbourne. The contested possession, the comparison of contested possession to uncontested possession. Yep. And we, you know, everyone gets a con obsessed with contested possession because it's a great barometer. Early on in the piece, this is what Collingwood were doing to Geelong. They, they, it was all in close. They had no capacity to get it to the outside, no capacity and, to transition yep. footy. And, and no no ability to win some easy, uncontested yeah, ball. So, so, so you see this here. So more contested possessions than uncontested possessions in the first quarter never happens. Yeah, so the only time it might happen is if you're playing in a bog, yes. like a torrential downpour. So it's generally our, our stat, um, when he tells us, it's about 70-30. Yeah. If, if you want to know a figure. So that there, you look at it and go, there's there's pressure and heat, OK? How do they handle this? Do they go back and try and control the contest, yeah. which has been their way for a, you know for a number of years? Well, this is the point, I think, with Geelong. is We, we know Geelong have kept finding more ways to, to go all in as a football club through their recruiting, through their coaching, and more recently through their game style. And so Chris got at the start of the year, he said, we're, we're, we're going to tinker, we're, we're going to overhaul the game style because in the highest pressure, highest leverage moments, the control style of game where they go possess, 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 it's let them down. So they blow it up, and then on the weekend, I think, was a, was a great example. Because you look at the uncontested mark, the control game, they, they didn't flinch. This is what they, happened in the prelim. That's right. In the prelim, exactly what you're talking the about. control game was taken away from them, yep. and they got belted to the tune of 83 points. And when they were under pressure early in the game, and you think, will they revert back? They didn't flinch. Well, for an example, that's as good. As, that's like you've sort of made that up to, to, to <laughs> uh, you know, argue for the argument. But the exact same number of uncontested marks, and there's the contrast in the margin. So against Melbourne, that the, yeah, they go back to it. It doesn't work. Melbourne squeeze up on them, turn the footy over, bang and score. But this time they go, no, let's go. They didn't transition the footy in the first half from defensive fifty to in inside fifty. So we're talking about moving the ball. It was zero. Mm. They didn't do it once. So, a lot of it's to do with methodology with the ball, though, isn't it? And, and we've seen them overwhelm teams in home and away contests for years and upon years, and they just do it so easily, don't they? But all of a sudden now, when they need to take a risk, they can. But it helps when you've got players up forward that can yes. impact a game, doesn't but that, it? But, uh, but that's right. But this here says, so they, they transition 0%, yet they stuck at it and kicked three or four goals from the back half in the last yeah, quarter. Yeah, which, because they play brave. Yeah, that's right. So it showed a lot of moxie for the group mm. to, 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 to not revert back to, to ways of the past. So this was really, this was 12 months in the making and it was designed for that type of game. When the opposition bring the ultimate heat, which Collingwood did, credit to them, Geelong still found a way and it took Geelong to do what no other club has been able to do to, to do to the pies. So big tick for Chris Scott. Talk to us about Jeremy Cameron, who's been well, well found yep. um, as, a, as a player, as someone that's you know been able to change the way he plays to a degree. I thought in that first quarter when they couldn't get their hands on it, when there was no one contested ball to be won, he stood out like a beacon. They brought him to a club for a reason, didn't they? Because he can make things happen. He's got the mobility to push up the ground, to run back with it, 
We're even starting to see him taking contested marks in the air, which we haven't seen for a long, long time. Such is the confidence growing within the, the Geelong makeup. But what made it even more important was the fact that Darcy Moore did such a good job on Tom Hawkins. Yeah. They needed someone to carry the load. And even when it wasn't going right for them, he kicked the first goal that got them going. Kicked a yeah. couple of goals just to keep them within touch. He's had games throughout his career when it's, it's almost like he's waited for the game to come to him, but yep. he went to it, which as a, as a high, like a, a centre-half forward, that's the job, and he did it so well. He didn't wait, he didn't sit back, he went and found the ball rather than waiting for it to come to him. It was a great, great performance. We loved it. And the way that the Cats changed their style, changed their coaches, changed the way they go about it, but also changed their profile of their list and they've gone back to saying, listen, we need some athletes, we need some runners. Yeah. We told the story six weeks ago about on draft night, how they particularly wanted to get home, so they traded yeah. on draft night to get up. Here's Chris Scott post-game. One thing we've added to our team, you know, over the last period of time is some guys that are not only dangerous ahead of the ball, but they can really run. You know, they're, they're, they're elite runners of the competition and... Um, you know, that, that that helps us on both sides of the ball. And, yeah, that, and that's, why, that's why Geelong is such a good football club. Because they... Identify they, the need. That's right. So it's, you, your left hand knows what the right hand is doing. So recruiting know the way coaching want to play and they relay the message and they go out and target the players and you stick them out on a wing, hold your width, and these blokes just run up and down the wing all day. It was awesome. Yeah. So draft night, that's, that, that, there's the story. So we'll have a look at what the result is. They go, this is what, when they go, OK, let's trade into the first round on draft night because we need a runner. OK, who have you got in mind? Oh, I reckon this kid Holmes is an athlete. I reckon there's an upside. This is the payoff when it matters most. So Ginevan goes to the contest... Holmes reading the ball, reading the play, and you know, and as you heard from Chris Scott, we want players who are able to run from one end of the ground to the other. And and Holmes at a critical time, times his run, gets from one end and helps Gary <laughs> Rowan out. But what it what it does, Gaz, if you've got speed and endurance, that creates options around the ground. So that then allows them to be a bit braver with the movement of the football, knowing they've got people that are going to cover the ground and probably cover it better than the opposition. So last quarter, they, they have outscored opposition final quarters by 218 points. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> run, fit, athletes. Yeah, yeah so w w who else, though? Because it's, got oh. a, it, it, it's not just the athletes. Because in that sort of game, when it's, when it's contested, it's hot, and it's a lot of it's on the inside to get it to the outside, who, who's the man getting it done for? Right, this is my winner of the week, Tom. Atkins. I thought Tom Atkins has done this throughout the season and he did it again in the last quarter when it needed to be done, right? So the numbers here, you go, wow, all game highs, how good is that? They've trailed Geelong three times at three-quarter time in the back half of this season, three times. In all three games, Tom Atkins has been the second highest rated player in their comeback in the last quarter, the second highest rated player and the fifth highest rated player. That's that's the that's Selwood stuff, right? And Selwood, by the way, we'll get to him in a moment. Yeah. But he did it in the home and away when they needed him, and then in the first final, that performance there was just crazy good. Yeah, it's I the loved it. It's the growth of Geelong, isn't it? So well, that's how you reinvent yourself as a yeah. footy team. You can't keep relying on the same players no. because they get weary yep. dragging the team along. And, and there are a lot of people talking about how stiff Parfit was actually losing out on the spot. Tom Atkins isn't a celebrated player, but he's elevated himself to a high-quality player and he's now starting to take the load. And what's more, when you see Chris Scott put danger on the bench and sell it on the bench yeah. to start every quarter, yeah. which I can guarantee you they don't want to do, Gaz, because no. that is a, that's a, that's a, a, a big slap to the <laughs> face in terms of your pride, isn't it? Yeah. It's because they've got the confidence in these guys to get the job done. And, and when they don't like it, which is competitors you don't, and we spoke the Danger Post game like and it. he had this funny right ride if he didn't <laughs> like it. You just go, hey, exhibit A, here's yeah. Tom Atkins' yeah. number. Hey? Yeah. So yeah. there you yeah. go. Oh, do you want to win a flag? Yes. Correct. Collingwood yeah. lost no fans. No, they didn't. So there are, you can give great effort, but it doesn't always guarantee the result. Now, for Collingwood, it has guaranteed the result because they've just found a way to win and to win and to win from the most unlikely scenarios. So they, they, they lose the game, but they lost no fans. They went forward as a group. It, it was an awesome performance from Collingwood. And it, those are the games where it's, it's a shame someone has to walk away feeling as, as dejected as they did because they, they were fantastic. All the great things that we've admired about Collingwood were on display. The things that have emerged throughout the course of the season, which we go... Uh, so the day cost emergence, who's the NAB rising star, who's had a great home and away season, you go, OK, can he do it in final series? Well, when the heat's on and there's pressure on, ball in hand... He's as good as anyone again. So, so composed, late, Gaz. So this so stuff, composed. this yeah, is this, all late. Yeah, this, is, this, bit... 
This is all last quarter where it's like, look, look at this little deaf kick here when... Do you, look, do you see how well Geelong is set up behind the footy? They're banking on the pressure, making a player just bomb the ball long. So he's the one that was able to split it open, find the little gap. That's the reason Dugowie gets on the end of it. You can't teach decision-making, can you? you? You've either got it or you haven't. And... and if you've got a few players like that that can get the ball when they need it, yeah. you're half a chance. It drives but, you nuts. Do you know what the funny thing was about Collingwood, though? We're so used to them coming from behind and winning games. This was a different look for them. Getting out in front and trying to hang on. Mm. And you've got to say, they gave it a damn good try. So, oh, I'm with you. I don't think they lost any admirers. That was stiff. None. Dar Darcy Moore was brilliant. Oh, so, coming, coming, coming into the game, he was a player that, at various stages this year, you... you, you, know, you you look at him and his greatest strength can be his greatest weakness in that he tries to read it and he rolls off. Well, Tom, Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron loomed large and I thought if he gets it wrong today, he, he could be made to look... Uh, not, not silly, but he could be made to look like second rate almost. Well, he just, he, he just took the game over, particularly early when there was pressure on the ball, it was hack kick, it was getting rushed forward. His positioning, his anticipation mm. and his ability to complete his plays was, was a big part of the reason they jumped out of the blocks. Loved it. And I'll tell you what else I loved. Uh, I love what uh, Craig McRae had to say post-game. Well, we want to act like winners. I, I, I must admit, the siren goes and there's um, half a dozen of our guys laying on the ground. That, for me, that's not a winner. That's, that's um, acting like a loser. Um, we lost the game. We're not losers. I like... God, I just can't <laughs> say how much I love it. I was doing radio today. Some people out there didn't, you know, which is fair enough. Why? Um, well, for well, what reason? Well, you know, the emotional side of it. Yeah. The players are emotion. They've given their all. But, but, have a go at them, but, but I think it was for the players. It's a because, steal. Because mm. It's, it's a hard for edge. the players because it's the hard edge and oh, it's like, yeah. hey, there's no straight sets for us, boys. No. Exactly We right. are winners. Yeah. And they, they were... They were winners in the sense that they gave themselves every opportunity through giving unconditional effort, and sometimes there are just no guarantees.